Shoot the Five with Xavier Porter. Back at it. BrooklynFights.com. We in the building. You already know what it is. Got another question for the fight fans out there. I think I'm going to start doing these, these weekly joints. Start posing the questions of how good certain fighters are, you know, to get people's opinions and assessments. <coughs> Excuse me. Still cold. Still got a cold. So today's today's topic of discussion, today's fight of discussion, I should say, is... Oh, my bad. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Mr. Shakir Stevenson, the undefeated Newark featherweight sensation, is getting ready to put on for his hometown. He got a fight coming up on, what's the day of the fight? Let's see, July 13th at the Prudential Center. It's going to be live on ESPN. He is headlining the card. This is a really great fight for this young man. He is the he is the number one featherweight contender for the WBO title. However, he is probably possibly facing the toughest opponent he has faced thus far in unbeaten Hiram Sakaris. Now, Hiram Sakaris is a pretty good fighter. <laughs> okay? Sakaris is a Cuban fighter. Sakaris, as you know with Cuban fighters, they're they're pretty good. They're they're exceptionally good. Um he's five foot six. He has fought as high as the lightweight at one thirty five. He has fought as high as lightweight. You know what I'm saying? Um Stevenson is coming off a really great win. After defeating Christopher Diaz on the undercard at Terrence Crawford um, against Amir Khan, he actually really gave Diaz some great work. He put the beats on him in a sense. But now, he's facing this guy, Hiram Sakaros, and it should be a really, really good fight. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand something right now. Shakir Stevenson is on that path to... to to greatness, to legacy, and he's doing it in such at a such at a, at such a high speed. <coughs> Excuse me. He has the likes of uh, what's the man a Andre Ward holding him down, giving him great tutelage knowledge about the sport of boxing. He also has the, the OG in his corner. You know what I mean? Jay Prince. If y'all know about Jay Prince, you better go check him out. Um, we got the OG in his corner managing his career. So he has the advisor he has the advising of Audrey Ward, the management of Jay Prince, and then he has the promoter of all, Bob Arum. He set up if you ask me, he set up really, really great. He got a really good career set up and lined up. And, it's been, and they've been moving it really, really good. Bob Arum has been promoting boxing matches since, the, what, the, the late 60s, early 70s? He's promoted some of the, the, the biggest fights in, in boxing's history, from Ali, Frazier, to, to, to uh, you know, I'm not saying he was the primary promoter in that, but I'm just saying, like, from, from you know, he's promoted fights with Ali, with Frazier, George Foreman, and, and Lennon, and Hearns, and Hagler. Like, we talking about Bob Allen, man. He's 80-something years old, but the man could still promote some of the, and, and give fight fans some good shows. So, it was a no-brainer. It was actually probably a smarter decision for Shakir Stevenson to join Top Rank Boxing instead of going with Mayweather Promotions. Given that we are, you know, Floyd is Floyd, but in promoting, it's a difference. It's a business, and you want to go with a promoter team. I guess for him and his family, they figured to go with a promoting team that has been in the game for years, like Biggie say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Been in the game for years and made me an animal. It's rules to this shit. I wrote me a manual, step by step booklet for you to get the game on track, not your wig put back. You know what I mean? Push back, I should say. So, um, now, 
I mean, this is I like this matchup for the young boy. I like this matchup, man. Hiron Sakaris. It's a Cuban professional. Migrated, I guess, defected Cuba at the age of 11. Became an amateur in the U.S. Um, he represented Arta, Arta Misa. I, I don't even know where that's at. That's neither here nor there. Um, he's 22-0 with 14 KOs. All right, peep game. He's 22 and over 40 kills. I want to make sure I got that right. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> 20, yeah, like I said, 22 and 0, 14 kills. Ranked number two in Cuba, number 65 in the world. Um, he's an Orthodox fighter. Some guys on his list that he's beaten is Jesus Martinez, Mike Oliver. Um. Let's see who else he's beat. Not that many. That jump out the window to you, I mean. Like, when I say, like, beat, you mean, like, oh, he beat such and such. Oh, he beat such and such. You know what I mean? It's not really anybody that pop out, like, oh, he beat that guy? You know. But Shakira, 11 and 0. Young man from New Newark, New Jersey. The 2016 Olympic bronze, 2016 Olympic bronze medalist. Bronze, excuse me, silver medalist. Um, he's defeated some, some some pretty good guys. The best guy he beat by far, thus far in his career, is Christopher Diaz. That's the best guy he's beat thus far. But if you look at the record of the fighters he's faced, they have some pretty good records. First guy he fought as a pro was was three and two. Second guy six and three. Third guy four and three. Third fourth guy four and two. Then he fought a guy that was 8 and 1. Then he fought a guy that was 12 and 0. Then he fought a guy that was 16 and 1. Then he fought a guy that was 16 and 4. Then he fought a guy that was 21 and 2. Then he fought a guy that was 22 and 1. And then he fought another guy that was 24 and 1. And let me let me say this. The guys that was 12 and 0, he knocked them out. The guy that was 16 and 1, he knocked that person out. The guy that was 21 and 2, he knocked that person out. And the other guy that was 22 and 1, he knocked that person out. Ooh, boy. Right now, Shakir Stevenson possesses the IBF Inter Intercontinental Featherweight title and the vacant WBO, I mean, the WBO, NABO Featherweight title, which means he's definitely, like, in the rankings. He's ranked number one in the WBO. <coughs> Winning that title gave him, gave him the that number one spot. So he, him beating Hiram Sakaris will not only further that spot, but it will get him closer to a title shot at 126. Now, when you look at the division at 126, it's pretty stacked. At the top of it is Gary Russell Jr. Ooh, boy. Gary Russell Jr. Um, <laughs> We're going to get to that in a second. At the top of 126 is Gary Russell Jr., bro. Well, they they got Leo C Leo Santa Cruz at the top of 126, but this one this 126 division is tight, bro. It's tight. You got Leo Santa Cruz, Gary Russell Jr., Oscar Valdez, Josh Warrington, Carl Frampton, Cam Zhu from from China, who's 17 and two. Let me run down their records too. Leah Santa Cruz, 36 and 1. Gary Russell, 30 and 1. Oscar Valdez, 26 and 0. Josh Warrington, 29 and 0. Carl Frampton, 26 and 2. Cam Zhu, 17 and 2. Kid Gall Galahad, 26 and 1. Guillermo Regandale. Yes, Guillermo Regandale. They got him listed up here at 126. He's 18 and 1. And then you got um my guy from Mongolia. He's fighting out of Cali now. Tug. Tug Nyambaya. He's un he's um undefeated. Eleven and zero. And he's the number one mandatory to Gary Russell Jr. Because he has the IBO one twenty six title. Then right after that you got Jesse Magdalena. Then you got Taki. Taki Taki Man Jesse Magdalena is twenty six and one. You got Taki or Taki Taki Minamoto sixteen and five. You got. These guys are Japanese right here. Then you got Raya Abe, 19 and 2. Then you got Jack Tapora. He's from the Philippines, 23 and 0. Then you got Shakir Stevenson, who's 11 and 0. 
these are some pretty good solid solid guys right here within the 126 division now as it stands he is the number one mandatory for the WBO featherweight title right so who has that belt Trump roll please for that <laughs> oh excuse me I gotta get rid of this cold fast, man. So, the person who has the WBO featherweight title is Oscar Valdez. So let's set our sights to Oscar Valdez for a second. Twenty six and O, twenty KOs. Oh boy. Oh boy. The question is. How is, how is this matchup going to be when you got Oscar Valdez on Bob and fighting on Bob Arum's top rank card, promoted by Bob Arum, and then Shakir right behind him, and he the number one, number one mandatory? How is that going to pan out, man? How is that going to pan out? Yo, I'm telling you, man, the young boys on the rise, like they say, Harlem on the rise. The young boy Shakir Stevenson is on the rise. Pay attention. July 13th, Prudential Center. He's coming home. He's fighting in front of his hometown fans. I'm hoping that he sells out the Prudential Center. You know what I mean? He he you know what I mean he deserves that. He, he's 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 an Olympic, you know, Olympic silver medalist. He's ranked number one in his division, mandatory for for a belt next to line. You know what I'm saying? Jersey need to put put some love behind this young man. I don't know how they're promoting it right now. I don't know how the street team is moving out there. Um, I don't know if he's hitting up like radio stations, if he's going to the barbershops and he's doing little programs with with the kids and everything. Or I do know he's he's definitely a trainer though, because because he stays in the gym. That young man stays in the gym. If he's not in the gym with Richardson Richardson Hitchens. That's a, you know what I mean? For Mayweather Promotions, they both were on an Olympic team. Not the same team, but in the Olympics together. They're really good friends. They came up together. Um, he be he's probably in the gym with Terrence Crawford. He don't really talk, he don't really rock out with Tank too tough like that anymore, but um it is what it is with them two. I'm I'm pretty sure it's a respect there, but I don't think the friendship is really there like that. You know what I mean? So with that being said, July thirteenth, it's a great card. It's a, it's a fantastic card because you got Josh Greer on the card as well. If y'all don't know about Mr. Don't Blink, y'all better find out. You got Josh Greer on that card as well. And then you also got, you, you also got, um, I just saw his name. Damn, it just slipped my, oh, my bad, Josue Vargas because I seen him the other day. Josue Vargas, the prodigy who was on Mayweather Promotions previously, who's um, only, has, only has one loss, which is a um, disqualification loss on his record. Rising super lightweight, junior, rising super lightweight, welterweight, depending on which weight class he chooses to fight on fight night. But you got Josue fighting on the card as well. So it's, it's the card is being shown on ESPN. Hey, you, you're going to be able to watch it. You know what I'm saying? Again, he's fighting on paper who appears to be his toughest fight in his career because it, when you fight a Cuban fight, that's, that's tough regardless. His skills are top notch in boxer from amateur up. You know what I'm saying? So. Hey, man, Shakir Stevenson, I'm riding with the young man. I believe in the young man. Um, I've seen many of his fights faced up live. I've probably seen at least, I don't know how many times he done fought in the garden. I've seen every fight he had in the garden. You know what I'm saying? I've talked to the young man plenty of times. I've interviewed him plenty of times. I remember talking to him even before he went to the Olympics. And um, I blessed him with a hat from Brooklyn, from the brand. I was like, here, hold that. That's for you right there, bro. You know what I mean? He was like a looking good young man. Even when I was talking to Charles Conwell last week, I was like, yo, Charles, you remember? He was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, you, you, you was one of the first guys to interview us at Gleason's. I was like, that's what's up. Now, that's three years ago when they was going to the Olympics. So for the, for the young man to remember me from that, that says a lot, man. <coughs> anyway, I got to go get some water or something because it's cold. It's kicking my ass. But tune in July 13th, man, on ESPN. Shakir Stevenson is coming home. The Brick City native is coming home. You know what I mean? Reggie Noble, Redman Town, New Jersey Drive. You know what I mean? 
If y'all don't know about Newark Stand Up, if y'all don't know about Brick City Stand Up, man, y'all better, yeah, and y'all better be mindful because they get it in out there. So if you talk slick out there, you may not make it home. You may not make it back on the train. You may not make it back on the highway. Don't, t- don't come to Newark talking slick because Newark don't play. And I'm from New York, so I know how Newark get it up, give it up. But I'm definitely going to be in the building for this fight, for real, for real. All right, Super 5, Brooklyn fights, you already know what it is. Salute. Let's get it, man. Can't wait for this.